so I'm going to be talking about uh, cybersecurity in the realm of critical infrastructure today. Um, you know, it's it's a uh, it's a big issue, of course, and uh, it's also crossed over into the physical realm. Uh, it's amazing how how bad it is. I was driving in this morning on uh, I think it was on Broadway Street and. Um, I was in bumper to bumper traffic crawling along and I looked over at one of these um, uh, NSTAR or whatever, the, whatever they've rebranded themselves to now, uh, energy company substations on, on the left and there's a gate there that's got a chain on it and it's a substation and it's got a lock and there's a gap about this big between the two gates. And I'm looking at it, I'm saying to myself, I had to make a video of myself walking through that thing just to show that it's possible. Then I realized the last time the MIT students did such a thing with the MBTA, they had a bunch of uh, three-letter organizations breathing down their neck. So uh, maybe I'll, 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 I'll put that off for next year. Um, but nonetheless, there are uh, just an amazing array of, of risks out there. Um, I just quickly, a little background about me. Um, I'm, I've been involved here at MIT for about 14, 15 years as a fellow, graduate fellow. Um, I've been involved with uh, the ILP program. Uh, Schneider's a member. Uh, I've trained here in cryptography and some other areas. I've been doing hacking since I was a, a teenager, since I was about, you know, since, since uh, 1983. Uh, so I've been doing this now for uh, about, what, just about 30 years or something. I can't believe it's that long. Um, I live outside of the city here. I like to fly, fly helicopter, anything with wings or, or rotors. Um, I, and I also enjoy adrenaline sports like surfing in very large storms uh, off of the coast of New England in, in the North Atlantic. So that's, that's actually me there crawling. Uh, you can barely see it, but that's me right there crawling up the, uh, the, the face of the wave there um, in, in New Hampshire. So I like, I like extreme sports, and I like, I like to do hacking and other fun stuff like that as a hobby. All right, so one of the things I want to talk about, just so we're all clear about what cyberspace is, um, so this is something that we came up with um, as a result of uh, doing, doing some research and analysis um, as part of this new IC3 program that you may have heard about. Um, I think Lori mentioned it earlier. Um, th this is uh, just sort of a, a high-level understanding that we can share universally of what cyberspace actually is. So it's really resonant and bounded by physics, right? Um, we're not talking about ghosts or anything like that. Uh, its real purpose is to transmit, store uh, information to serve its users with varied proofs of identity and, and maybe anonymous at times. Highly elastic in nature, contains the internet, internets, terrestrial space-based systems, marine-based systems. Uh, is effectively protocol ag agnostic, but um, is, is definitely reliant upon multiplexing. Uh, lacks the Leviathan and is uh, anarchic and decentralized by design. So this is sort of the characteristics uh, that we see in cyberspace. Favors no use, um, neither favors defenders uh, uh, or, or, or offense. Um, I just want to mention this. I'm not going to get too deep into this, but one of the things that we've started working on is an ontology to, uh, in the political science department to think about how these attacks take place, who's behind them, and what are some of the uh, central dynamics that, that are involved. And one of the things that we've uh, come up with is this idea, you know, we talk about cyberspace in this cold uh, manner, right? We talk about computers. It all seems very abstract, almost like Star Wars or Tron or some other um, idea. But in reality, it, it's really human-centric, right? You've got, you've got actors who are, are living flesh and blood people that have an agenda and intent, right? And their intent is to coerce, to, de to deter, to unify, to distract. To, and they may have other intents as well, to make money and, or, or to steal. They have attributes, right? They have geography that might be state-based. Um, and what they do is, depending on their agenda and intent and their attributes, they come up with an idea about how they want to project power uh, using the keyboard or using cyber uh, systems. And what they do is they either build malware or they you know, use existing malware or they go shopping for malware, or whatever they do, they then use that to project power, okay? And rather than a traditional kinetic method, which you know, is, is very familiar to many of us, you know, special forces, ground forces, nuclear, whatever, they're actually down here on this part of the spectrum um, where they're looking at um, launching cyber uh, attacks um, everything from espionage to prepping the battlefield to destroying data, stealing data, demoralizing the, uh, the opponent, um, and so on. So this is just a simple high-level working model to understand that we're dealing with people at the end of the day when we talk about cybersecurity. We're not we're always dealing with machines. Um, so some of the major challenges that are impacting uh, everyone in this, whether it's the hackers or, or the defenders or the good guys and the bad guys, uh, the pace of evolution is really uh, hectic. Uh, this is a, a very... Uh, very dramatic thing. We're still not caught up. I mean, we're still somewhere in here from a security perspective 
we haven't really caught up to the paradigm shift. Digitization by nature is an equal opportunity force. So that force that we embrace as a enabler for small guys, you know, the, the, the David and Goliath scenario, also has a very dark side to it. It, it means that a Goliath can, a David can then attack a Goliath uh, using very low uh, cost attacks and, and often take down a, a much larger opponent. So, so digitization we look at and we, we preach about it at the Sloan School as being a very powerful thing, right? We're gonna, we're gonna make uh, these smaller companies competitive. We're gonna, you know, cut out the dead, the dead weight and we're gonna do all it. Well, that same force is actually can be used um, by adversaries uh, and, and as we've seen, Digitization does not really respect political relationships. In fact, it's usually highly disruptive of, of political relationships. We also have this distributed nature of threat, reliance upon off-the-shelf technology with a questionable supply chain. Um, we talked about catching up uh, in terms of, you know, we haven't learned from the mistakes that we've made in the past in terms of architecting computer systems and deploying them. So if we don't learn from this, we're really looking at kind of a cybergeddon um, uh, in terms of this next generation of um, OT and industrial, um, the Internet of Things. The other thing that we've seen is that there's been a jump from uh, the cyber to the physical, right? We've seen this jump. This is new. So if you're you know, breaking into databases, you're stealing credit cards, okay, good for you. Uh, if you're breaking in and you're shutting down an, uh, a city's uh, power grid, that's a little more serious than... Uh, than, than uh, something that my credit card company is going to take care of uh, for me. So people have really become sort of dulled to the idea of their, their, their credit card being stolen or other information being stolen. What is a new idea, and, and a lot of the hackers have it, is that they want to disrupt real things. They want to take down a bridge. They want to take down a city. They want to take down a, a water system. These are things now that have a lot more creds uh, in the hacker community than just uh, stealing credit cards. Um, the other thing is that a lot of our critical infrastructure is built upon legacy uh, hardware and software. I mean, we've, we've got installations out there with Windows 95, Windows 3, and not only were these built upon lax platforms, the ID, the, the, if you guys remember back to the, some of you will remember back to the 1980s, I remember a little bit of the 1980s, um, it was a very lax uh, culture, right? Things were, there was no 9-11, you know, the world was a happy place. Uh, why would we ever need security in our dam or our power grid, right? Or our oil or energy pipeline? Why would we ever need that? You know, there's no threats out there. Everything is really great. It's the 1980s, right? Well, guess what? We're not living in the 1980s anymore. And um, this legacy uh, attitude that was used to build this, as well as the artifacts of these, these prehistoric operating systems, have really uh, created what I call the perfect storm. Uh, all of these factors add up uh, to uh, a very risky uh, uh, situation with respect to widespread and serious impacts to our infrastructure. Um, so these are just future trends looking in the crystal ball. Um, there will, will be a shift to more complex cases of warfare, sabotage, and, and, and even crime that were not possible before. Um, now you've got this uh, ability to do self-funded uh, smaller seed stage hacks enabled by virtual currencies. We all love virtual currencies, right? Bitcoin and so on. Well, how would you like to have your dog ransomed for Bitcoin by your home uh, video camera and having to pay the hackers or the extortionists in Bitcoin? I bet you wouldn't like Bitcoin so much then, right? So Bitcoin has a, a, a good side. It also has a very dark side as well. Um, you're seeing ISIS and others accept funding uh, from Kickstarter-like examples uh, to crowdsource uh, funding in, in these unmonitored currencies. Uh, you're seeing things uh, where, where they can now stand up a, a cyber army uh, and, and attack, uh, attack uh, you know, would-be uh, would targets. Um, our vendors continue to produce insecure products and let customers and researchers test them for free. This is an ongoing trend. Uh, that's not acceptable in critical infrastructure. It might be okay for uh, you know, a, a Microsoft Word or a desktop program, but it's not okay for uh, something that's running a nuclear power plant, right, clearly. Um, markets for malware, munitions, and scams have grown and will continue to grow beyond control based upon some of the new currencies in, in, in uh, markets that are online now on the dark web. Um, so this all really adds up again to uh, major outages potential uh, on, our, on our infrastructure, uh, our financial systems. Uh, there are a lot of doubters still out there, but as steel plants are shut down by, by different cyber attacks, as, um, you know, as, as grids are shut down, water treatment plants are taken offline, uh, or, or spill sewage into, into, into rivers, even the doubters now are starting to say, you know what, we, we better pay attention to this, right? There's something serious here afoot, and we better really pay attention to this, to this infrastructure, uh, critical infrastructure cyber. 
Uh, the smart grid is another real uh, danger. We'll talk just briefly about that. You know, our power grids in our systems were never designed to be internet connected or bi-directional, right? And so this is a real, uh, an ongoing risk. Um, I'll just talk quickly about the HECO pro HECO problem. This is a, just a, an example of some of the issues with the grid. Uh, you see here, there's a, this is when the PV potential is the highest in the Hawaiian, I think it's Maui. Um, and this is um, the down ramp of the, um, the, the generators, the Hawaiian Electric and Maui Electric. Um, and then what ends up happening is you bring more of this PV content on, you try to manage it, and you know, cyber gets into there, the circuits. You end up creating this really steep uh, ramp up here where they have to bring power online quickly. And this is actually causing back feeds uh, in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 2013 there was a back feed condition that happened that was really damaging to the grid. And so the combination of, of just bad things that are happening with, with smart grid um, and, and cyber together is just a really dangerous thing. Social engineering, this is the um, difficulty of exploitation. This is uh, a time scale here. And you can see here that although we've become much better in terms of designing computers, um, in terms of um, power and complexity, the humans, however, have maintained a much steadier pace in terms of evolution to the technology. So this gap that we have right here is all fertile ground for uh, cyber you know, spear phishing we heard earlier. Um, this is really the human now is part of it. So attacking the human is a big part of this. Uh, and I'll just, one last slide, because I think we're getting out of time. Wait, one more minute. Um, I just want to outline one of the big differences that we all have to really focus on is the difference between IT and OT, OK? And, and we, we were all brought up with this idea of confidentiality, integrity, and availability being key to securing your IT. And it is, it is for some people still, right? But in OT, it's a much different thing. In the Internet of Things, it's a much different thing, OK? It's inverted. So you've got availability being the, the most important thing, right? I don't care if my HMIs are showing me Pac-Man video games uh, in my water treatment plant as long as clean water is coming out to the citizens who need it, right? right? So they're willing to actually uh, sacrifice integrity and confidentiality. So as a bunch of, I guess, IT or technology practitioners, we need to really change the way we think about um, IT security going forward as it becomes more critical to our day-to-day -day operations um, and in our life, right? And so I guess the message I would leave is that there's a lot of opportunity uh, for entrepreneurs and for, for others to look at securing um, our, our OT stuff, our critical infrastructure, um, because the threats are just growing exponentially. Um, and and you know, Schneider Electric is, is focused on this area, uh, but you know, it, there's a big market here. There's a lot of opportunity for startups and others who would innovate and, and uh, help protect the, you know, this, this technology that we now rely upon for our, our, you know, our, our food and water effectively. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks.